So what would it be like to be in the heart of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict or the gang wars of El Salvador or in the middle of battles between militias in the Democratic Republic of Congo, all without ever physically going there? Well, a new virtual reality exhibit called The Enemy can take anyone inside a conflict zone safely. Culture correspondent Mai Margit explains. What if you could come face to face with your enemy? Or get up close with people engaged in armed conflict, all without leaving the room? A new virtual reality exhibition allows visitors to do just that. Karim Ben Khalifa's The Enemy, a groundbreaking show that was recently in Israel, goes on a journey to the heart of some of the world's biggest conflicts and brings participants face to face with enemy combatants, like those involved in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's a very polarizing conflict. It's a conflict that a lot of people know or feel about one way or the other. Um, so it was very interesting to, um, to come and, and, and do that here and try to see what still is as common humanity in between people who are designed and trained to kill each other. Meet Gilad, a soldier in the Israel Defense Forces, and Abu Khalid, a Gaza-based fighter in the popular front for the liberation of Palestine. Who's your enemy and why? My enemy represents any occupation forces and injustice. My enemy is any person or any organization who plans to hurt me, my family or my people, by using weapons or in any other way that could hurt a person. I found this project very interesting. I was not aware of all the conflicts they discussed in the exhibit. I was mostly attracted to the fighters from Gaza. I wanted to hear a different side to the story of the conflict we are experiencing in Israel now. The enemy is an immersive show, one that hopes to break away from traditional depictions of war. For years, a team of 120 scientists and experts from the United States, Canada, and France worked together to make the technology showcased here possible. Before visitors go in, they fill out a questionnaire. The experience is then tailored based on their answers. You've been followed within the, within the systems and we know what is the distance you have with one fighters. Um, we, 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 we can um, extract the kind of a nervousness you have in front of one guy as opposed to the other one. Some of the groups represented in the exhibit have been described as terrorist organizations. But Khalifa argues he's not trying to pick sides. I'm not here to tell who's right and who's wrong. That's not the goal of the project, but to make you reflect on, um, on, on, on what is war and what it takes and what is left uh, after all those years for those people to fight. But Khalifa is not simply questioning the whole concept of enmity. He's also hoping virtual reality will enable people everywhere to experience world events and see the news in a different way, especially the younger generation. And they're really eager to go into virtual reality and they spend 50 minutes without getting interrupted uh, by, you know, one of those apps and, 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 and being really uh, engaging with the contents. And that is not something they do on a newspaper or even on the TV. The next stop for the enemy is in the US at the MIT Museum in Cambridge, where it will open in October. So who is your enemy? The only way to know is to face him. Maya Margit, I-24 News. And joining us today